Hello, and welcome back to a fortnightly designer corner, although I kind of forgot to do one two weeks ago, so I guess monthly? Monthly designer corner. This time we're going to be talking about naval rebalances, as well as going over some of the air stuff we didn't mention last time. Both of these dev diaries are like not too deep in terms of stuff to talk about, there's just a lot of figures and numbers to work through, so it shouldn't be too much to go over, as I'm not too technical, I just like to give general gists and thoughts about what's going on. Although I am more than certain there will be people out there with calculators and spreadsheets doing the maths and thinking what the next naval meta build is going to be, and why naval bombers won't be the just intuitive counter. Oh. Anyway, let's start looking at the Naval Rebalance Dev Diary. So Korax begins by talking about how in the current system there are some key things he kind of wanted to work through which felt unappreciated in the game. So currently good ship design is unintuitive, combat currently revolves around exploiting oversights in the game, and the general meta, which I assume is just tons of submarines and small ships, is very ahistorical, and they're trying to move away from this to have a large branching navy. As such, the goals are going to be clearer design processes, a meta based upon good structure and multiple key values, and making the historical choices work well in the game, so you, you know, intuitively want to make things that are historical, as opposed to everybody having to go ahistorical just to stay competitive. As such, the naval rebalance will involve the tech tree, the ship designer, hit profile, spotting, and fleet composition. And we begin by talking about the tech tree, which has got a very interesting change to me. So the glaringly obvious thing that they're going to change is now the naval tech tree is divided into two. One branch dedicated to ship hulls, the actual ship designs themselves, and the second branch dedicated to the guns, the batteries, the tubes, all the things that come as an addition to the ships and the modifications you stick on them. So in the first screenshot we can see here it's a much smaller uh, <laughs> whole tree. One of the key things that is noticeable immediately is the battleship armour and cruiser armour have been combined into one single armour tech which moves along. Previously, if you wanted cruiser armor, you'd have to go down that, and if you wanted battleship, it had a separate one. But now they've got their own individual line, so possibly going to be cheaper if you want to get good armor for both cruisers and battleships, meaning maybe it's pushing you to invest in both, as opposed to having to pick one, because it's too expensive to go for the other. Although it is mentioned that super heavy armor still is just part of the super heavy battleship. Uh, that's that's still there. On the other side we have the naval support tab, which has got far more drastic a change with things being moved around, things being removed, all kinds of shifts. So when we go back to looking at Hoi 4 in its current state, if we look at the naval support tech area, we'll see that we have here secondary batteries in its own little three part branch. This has been completely removed as we can see in the image. Now, basic medium batteries is going to be the central location to find your secondary batteries, meaning they've been pushed into the central branch in the middle of the battery tree. In addition, as to previously, where if you wanted to get to your um, small caliber and armor piercing the shells in, inside the naval tree, they'd have their own off branch that comes just below, that has now changed where they are a part of the central tree heading across. I'm uncertain if that means that in order to progress down the tree you inherently have to research more, or whether they've reduced the costs overall, so that means that because you're forced to research both, you don't necessarily have to spend as much time if you just want to get to where you would have gone to previously in a faster time. The last thing brought to attention is dual purpose guns <laughs> now also have their separate branch which has been added and put in the light gun line at the top of the branch. So if you want to go down this part, you have to go in an entirely separate direction, which is pushed much further to 1939. The last thing they talk about with an addition to Tex is the advanced medium dual purpose battery, which they say is a double whammy of both being good at anti-air and good at screening ships, which is supposed to be extremely powerful. So the next part of the dev diary talks about hit profiles and damage, which, uh, if we are to be completely honest, 
I'm struggling to understand the totality of it, but I am trying to pull away the meaning. So there have been changes to the way hit profiles work, which is the likelihood calculation that your ship is going to be hit by something and the accuracy of that weapon hitting it. As a ship moves through though, I think that the chance is sort of prolonged by how fast the ship is to dodge the attack or keep moving past it. So slower ships were much more impacted because I guess there's even more opportunities or they're just too slow to actually <laughs> avoid the hits coming in. So this is where some of the buffs are going to be coming from. In addition, there's also some changes to hit chance, including uh, radar and fire control increasing the hit chance, uh, homing torpedoes increasing torpedo chance, uh, but the base crit chance is down. So it's more so about the techs to hit have gone up, but the base chance is down. In addition, we've also got changes to spotting, which is to increase the likelihood over time that you will find something, including a random chance to instantly spot somebody every hour based on a 4% hourly check. So far as I can interpret this, it seems to mean that there's going to be more of a push towards actively firing upon one another instead of one person quickly trying to avoid being hit while the other one wasting their time struggling to keep up with the other person because they're either hidden or they're just too fast to keep up with or any of these factors or oh, you're just be too busy being bombed by naval bombers so now the chance to hit's gone up and the chance you're going to be found has gone up which means once you're in a fight you're fighting and you're more likely to take damage so now with ship designer changes we return to the land of calculators and excel spreadsheets literally this time, as well, it comes with a graph talking about the changes to different modules you can get for different ships and submarines. So as we scan through, we see some massive changes to speeds on depending on engines and hull types, as well as a core component being the reliability debuff coming from picking your engine seems to just be zero now. There is no debuff, which I suppose is good if you're worried about your engines breaking down and your uh, navy is constantly having to go into the harbour to repair itself, which I did notice quite a bit. In addition, it seems that most of the ships in general have gotten faster. Um, cruisers are faster, battleships are faster, um, even some lower carriers are faster. So in general, picking some heavy ships shouldn't be as much of a burden um, if you're worried about them just being too slow to get anything done. Oh, and as an addition, submarine visibility has gone up which means you won't be as hidden as perhaps you used to be, um, just constantly avoiding any kind of engagement whatsoever. Fire control radar has had a shift, meaning it's no longer buffing light attack and heavy attack, but more so buffing the hit chance for light and heavy attacks, which is in keeping with earlier when we were talking about how torpedoes had a higher hit chance and things in general were just giving you more opportunities to hit. So things like submarines, which weren't even engaging in fights, were getting off scot-free with no issues, but the heavier ships who were forced to fight because they were too slow and useless to do anything, were having to just get these heavier, heavier hits, 5%, 10%, 15 20 Now it's a percentage chance, so the heavier ships can take the brunt and the torpedoes are just going to get more likely to take the brunt. Speaking of submarines and their torpedoes, the torpedo attacks have gone down. I'm certainly seeing a key theme going on here <laughs> um, with the anti-submarine hate, as well as on the flip side, giving them an increased chance to a hit. So if you are going with submarines, you're not going to be just holding a toddler at bay as its little arms aren't able to reach you. Instead, you're going to be hitting weaker, but you're having to actually engage, which means you're going to hope you're going to be hitting more often. Next up on our list of changes, we've got armor and is that more anti-submarine torpedo? <laughs> hmm, okay. So torpedo hit critical chance has now gone down, depending on your battle cruiser armor, as well as just genuinely giving a torpedo damage reduction. Those hits are not going to count as much as they used to, if they are even going to hit critically at all, or just ricochet off the armor into the unknown. And with that, we reach the end of this extremely technical designer corner. Um, yeah, not really in keeping with what stuff I usually cover, like focus trees. I'm always more of the story element of the game as opposed to the sort of technical maths tryharding part of the game. But I think 
you know, there is a very key consistent fee here about taking down overall damage and sort of running in, hitting, running away, and more so two navies come together, they fight it out, and you want to make sure you're hitting more often than your opponent, and you're getting away from your opponent as more often as you can, as opposed to not even being seen, being a shadow on the wall. I was interested how there seemed to be no discussion regarding naval bombers, and how I feel a lot of players are using them to circumvent having to deal with any of this navy, especially considering the current system is if you have a navy, submarines will just blow it up and there's nothing you can do. So I am wondering whether the air rework dev diary is addressing the naval bombers, or if that's not going to be talked about at all. It could be though that the changes they've made here are generally going to be beneficial, meaning the power of the naval bombers over the strength of these ships is going to teeter on the side of ships being stronger, and the cost that you're diverting for naval bombers may not be as worth it. But let's go see some planes on the other side. And so we return to the missed dev diary of air changes, with a very fitting image of a plane shooting down and getting shot down in some naval combat, which really summarises the intermingling nature of the two dev diaries we're discussing. But regardless, this one's pretty short, so we can just go straight to it. So the core discussion about this dev diary is there's not going to be a like major huge overhaul, but more so continuations of quality of life changes to the air wing design, but there are going to be some key feature changes, which I talked about going forward. So the first one they talk about is simplified wing deployment, which should make it so that now your wings will just automatically go from a tick based system seen in this image. The way this should work is currently, I think when you want to create an air wing, you have to click on a airbase, um, add a new wing, creating a new wing, stick in the planes you want, and then set it about, then deploy it where you want. Now you can have a quick deploy for that airport. I'm not certain on how the system is going to work in live play, but from the feel, it seems that air bases are going to naturally want to restore themselves to a high capacity of planes, and go from it assuming you've ticked them to be okay to do so. Instead of you having to spend your time building up specific divisions, you just say, I want planes in this base, and it will naturally start creating some uh, divisions, air wing divisions, for you to use. Here you can see on the right, there is a reinforced preference for the different wings. So, I don't know, let's say you've got your air wing bases set up on the Moscow front and on the Allied front in the west as Germany, you can make it so that let's say your weaker planes are dealing with Russia because they don't really have much of an air force anyway, and you can prioritise your best newer planes to be in the English coast because that's where the real Battle of Britain is being fought, so you want your best planes over there. Arguably the more drastic change to see coming with the air rework is air groups, which look somewhat familiar to army groups or naval fleets, but they don't come with air marshals, so there's no training air marshals or anything like that. It's more so just a, a distinct measure to see which planes are being deployed in which zones, so you can organise them properly and group them. This was more so because when they made that change where you could assign your air wing divisions to armies, the air wings would sort of casually on an AI path just randomly start going to airports that were as close to the front line that they were helping as possible, which means you could set up some planes in Germany and by the time you started pushing to Moscow, you don't remember, you have no idea where your air wings have gone because they were just naturally following the front line of the army wherever it went, and they, I don't know, maybe they're secretly in Karelia, but you didn't know they were up there because, well, how would you know? So hopefully with this thing, you can be like, I've set this air wing to follow this army, and if I need to go back to it, I can just click here, and it takes me to that air wing. And in general, that covers the air rework dev diary. They do say there's more to come, but those are the general things, and in total, I do just see positive things here. I have really no complaints. <laughs> I think everything works out as a positive in general. So yeah, just small, good changes. You know, I almost forgot the Brewski bonus, which is the comment section. And I swear I don't remember it being like this because Mitchman, who I think is, well, it says one of their community ambassadors, 
has sort of compiled all of the major questions into a frequently asked dev reply section, which kind of makes it easier to go through. But there's one thing that I did want to bring out, which I saw in here. One of Wall Ace's questions is, is expanding the set of aircraft attributes being considered? Stuff like altitude, rate of climb, which says more on this soon. So I'm wondering if there is going to be a rework to, um, well, we've had armor designers, tank designer, we've had ship designers. So maybe there is possibly something to do with plane designers coming. More on this soon, you know, changing how high they can go, how fast they are, the guns they have could be coming. So, hmm, we'll see. And with that, I'll say thank you very much for watching. Um, sorry, this wasn't, you know, as story driven or focus tree driven or where's the Italian focus tree driven as perhaps some people may have liked, but it's these things that make the core gameplay experience better in general so that we can spend time enjoying the stuff like the core focus tree paths because this stuff is just well managed on its own. So with that, if you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe. And I'll see you in two weeks.